Hello friends, it's Terry with Terry's Mailbox and today I'm posting this fun butterfly rainbow box for the Funky Junkie Boutique. challenge was to select our favorite distress product and oh I had to really think about that but I finally went with the inks. I am a full set syndrome person. I have all the inks, the oxides, I've got the sprays, just having too much fun. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling this vignette box and then I'm using the Impresslip Butterfly. So again kind of testing my white picket fence paint here. This is distress paint. Yes I still have a dauber on it. Um, still it's working okay so when it doesn't work I'll change it but for now I'm gonna gonna keep it as is. So you can see here I'm adding um, picket fence um, paint to the bottom of the vignette box. <clears throat> Then I'm going to add some water. Going to add some more, um, some more of the paint. Again, I wanted the, um, I wanted to calm the box down. It was awfully, awfully dark. And again, because I'm doing this bright butterfly box, um, I wanted the background to be a little bit softer. And you'll see what I do um, in a little while here. I'll show you exactly what I did um, to create the back of this um, this vignette box. So the next thing I did was, here's that Impresslet butterfly. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Distress Watercolor cardstock um, to cut out at least seven of these butterflies. And again, rainbow colors, I'm doing seven. And so I'm going ahead and cutting all of the butterflies out, just kind of trimming, uh, trimming my cardstock down. And then we'll go ahead and cut them out. So you can see here, look at the texture that you get with these things. They are just so cool. So I'm going to show you how I ended up um, coloring them. I've got um, I've got picked raspberry. I've got um, kitsch flamingo, and then worn lipstick. So again, I've got that on my craft mat. I've added some water. I'm taking my fingers through it. <clears throat> By the end of the day, my fingers were just a hot mess, but that's okay. Um, so again, I'm just kind of dipping and, and pushing it to make sure that I get um, good coverage, adding more water if I needed to. And again, I wanted it to be completely, um, you know, completely coated and have some uh, darker areas to it. And so again, I repeated this with all of the other colors, the yellow, orange, green, teal, blue, and purple. So I'm only going to show you how I did um, did one of the one of the butterflies. So you can see here I'm adding a bunch of texture here. So don't waste that ink. So I picked up some watercolor cardstock and I've just kind of dipped and I'm dipping and drying and dipping and drying until I use up all the ink that is on the craft mat. And as I said, I did the same exact process for all of the colors of the butterflies. So I won't, I won't walk you through all of it. There should be a red arrow at the lower right hand corner of your screen. I would love it if you would follow my YouTube channel. Um, I work hard to bring you fun, um, colorful flowers and grungy videos. I'd love to have you become a subscriber. So again, I'm almost at the end here and you can see just how, you know, how when you add the layers, it just really um, makes it gorgeous. So again, here is all of my butterflies. And I will say the one thing I did not show in the video is adding um, foundry wax. So I did that and then dried it. I used sterling. So now I'm just cutting out the bodies and I decided to use the Halloween um, Distress wood grain cardstock in black to do the body. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting them out and then I'm going to pull them over here. And I kind of discovered it was easier to trim the bodies from the backside. So rather than trying to move around the front. So again, once I got them all trimmed, I'm going to go ahead and add uh, the black bodies to the center of the butterflies. I think it's a cool look. So again, I did that with all of the um, made enough bodies for all of my seven butterflies and so I'm just adding, gluing them on there. Just working hard getting them all glued on. They're so pretty. I just really, I don't know, I really, I love bright colors and rainbows are, rainbows are certainly my thing. So I um, thought it would be fun to do this 
um, box with the butterflies and um, I'll give you a hint the purple one decides to fly away so <laughs> you'll see that after I get the after I get it all done so there's all my butterflies all ready to go and so now I'm working on the back here so again I pulled out some botanic collage um, paper. This is an older, older set. So again, I'm using my uh, brush with the with the water in it to help tear it evenly, or you know, you know, better, so that I don't have these big, big blobs hanging off. And then what I'm going to do is use collage medium to put this on the background, so you can kind of see how the white distress ink or paint, excuse me, really helped to lighten this up, so that my background. Um, you know, is more milky. Um, so again, I pulled out my collage medium and my collage brush, and we'll go ahead and just add that. I'm getting low here. I'm gonna have to order some refills. Um, but again, just it, just painting it on here, and um, then going ahead and adding um, the collage med or collage paper. So I love these things, the tissue papers. I just think they're, you know, they've got several, and I, of course, own many of them, but um, I do like working with them because, again, that you can put them on card fronts, you can put them on mixed media backgrounds, as I did here, and they just, they really look nice. So just kind of finishing that little part up, and then we're gonna let it dry. And after it dried, I pulled out this stencil. This is brush strokes. Um, it's one of Tim's new ones. And then I have my texture paste um, opaque, and I've grabbed my palette knife, and I'm just kind of you know adding, filling in the um, the openings there. And again, I don't want it smooth. I want to make sure that I have some ridges and some dips in there. So um, I like the texture. So again, just adding it on here. So we're going to just keep, keep, uh, keep adding it and keep uh, adding the texture, adding more. Um, so you can see my one hand, I've got to hold the stencil in because it's a little bit longer than my box. Um, and if I let go, it would have it would have gone somewhere. So <laughs> again, just still adding um, and finishing up. And again, just a you know help helpful reminder is don't forget to either go and wash your stencils off right away or put them in a um, a container of water. I have a quote unquote lasagna pan like Tim does that again I throw it in and let it soak for a little while before I clean it. Again, you certainly don't want the paste to dry. So the next thing I did was I pulled out this gorgeous array of the. Um, the paints, I've got festive berry, sponge sugar, picked raspberry, ripe persis persimmon, my, uh, wild honey, mustard seed, lucky clover, um, tumbled glass, stormy sky, um, blueprint sketched, uh, pe peacock feather, salvage patina, and wilted violet. So I've decided to start with the, um, the violet in the lower right-hand corner, and you can see then I progressed on to the um, peacock feathers and then to the blueprint sketch. So what I'm doing is um, I'm leaving a little bit of paint. We're just dropping one drop, that's all it takes onto the glass mat and again i'm just kind of proceeding up the up the rainbow again um you know mixing the colors when i'm changing colors so that i get a little bit of a different different look sometimes i kind of did half of a half of a brush stroke with one color and then half with the other but again it you know it doesn't doesn't really matter but like i say we're trying to go in rainbow order so purple at the bottom and I did that because I want my purple butterfly to escape at the top left. So that's why I started with purple at the bottom. So again, um, you know, using the stencil really helps to corral the paint um, so that you don't get it on the background. This is just too much fun. I just, I love the color. So again, you peel that off and guess where that's going? Back in the lasagna pan. So I've got all that paint over there at the right. So the first thing I did was I made a print and then I'm gonna add some water to kind of let it wick. You know, that's a nice thing with distressed paints is they do wick. Um, so again, you can get a couple of prints out of this before it turns to mud. So again, here I am um, doing a couple of different prints. And then the next thing I did was I embossed, um, used embossing glaze to color over two of the, um, the quote chip label and, um, and just quote chips because I like, um, 
you know, I like the way that looks. So I used wilted violet and picked raspberry. And I used my embossing dauber, which is great for just kind of blobbing on a little bit of, um, of the embossing, embossing ink. So then we'll go ahead and, and dry them real quick. I love the way, you know, the embossing glaze looks on these quote chips because you can see the words very clearly. Um, it just really adds a lot of interest to the front of it. So, okay, last thing I got to do is put everything together. So the next thing I did was I just grabbed an ink pen and, um, you know, here I am just kind of rolling the, um, rolling the wings so that they're not flat when I've got them lying in the, in the box. And again, it just gives it some dimension, some texture, um, just too much fun. And again, the only thing I'm going to glue is the, um, the butterfly body. That's the only piece that I am gluing with these. And in the end, I decided to use my hot glue gun, um, to put it on. I did start with some collage medium, but, um, they weren't sticking very well. So I decided to go ahead and, uh, switch over. Look at how cool that is with those rainbow brush strokes there. So again, as I said, I started with collage medium, but in the end, I decided I really needed to um, hot glue these guys on there because they just, um, I, I, think they, I think they stick better. And especially since I know this is a display piece I'm gonna be using. So again, just kind of going in somewhat rainbow order trying to keep them together here and kind of, you know, making sure they're facing a little bit different direction. Each new butterfly that I add, I love that turquoise one. I'm a salvage patina girl. And that is, that is exactly what I, what I use there. If you look at my, um, my blog, I actually have the quote unquote recipe for all of the colors that I used. And so again, it was after I put the purple one on there that I decided I really, ee, I needed to do something and use the hot glue gun. So again, we'll go ahead and just add the, um, the couple of quotes and you are good to go. I hope you have enjoyed my, um, my butterfly, flight of the butterfly box. I just had a lot of fun making this and can't wait to hang it in my room. So again, it's Terry with Terry's Mailbox, and I am posting for the Funky Junkie Boutique. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Blogger, and YouTube. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.